Hi, it's Lisa. I have a home decor project today. I bought this back before Christmas and I was going to do it for Christmas and then I just didn't. I had lots of other things going on and I have tons of Christmas decorations already. Um, so I decided I still had it around and I thought that it would be appropriate for any time of the year. And I'm going to do colors then that match uh, the room that it's going to be in as opposed to doing sort of Christmassy kind of things. This is um, sort of a heavy chipboard uh, cut from um, Hobby Lobby. It's Paper Studio brand. It was $6 and I bought it when they had some of their Paper Studio stuff half price. So for $3 I got this really neat word. It's good and stable. I'm going to put a layer of gesso over it first and then I'm going to go over it with a bunch of jelly prints and we'll make the jelly prints as part of the video. Um, I want the gesso, you wouldn't have to put the gesso on it, but I want the gesso on it because I'm going to be used, doing my jelly prints on tissue paper and deli paper and some other types of things that will end up being semi-transparent. So I want a white base for this as opposed to the beige um, normal uh, chipboard color. So we're going to cover that uh, with gesso. And then um, we'll get into all of the jelly printing. I'm also going to put, uh, I know at least one of these butterflies that I bought at Hobby Lobby uh, to go on the design and I'm thinking about like wrapping it around here and tying it and I may do some flowers and stuff but we'll see where that goes. So first thing is the gesso and then we'll start doing some jelly printing in blues and greens and purples which is the colors in my room. Okay, we've got this painted up with gesso and I did kind of a light coat on the back. And most of this is going to get covered up with various papers, but I wanted that white base. I found it worked better to, to do in here first and then go over the whole top. So we kind of set that aside. And I have the 6 inch round jelly plate and the 8 by 10 jelly plate. I have these colors of paint, some Martha Stewart pearl paints and some regular paints here to work with. Got a bunch of stencils and things that we'll get out. And I'm also working with some stuff. I have some new kits in my Etsy shop that have papers in them, some tissue that's already pre-cut for you, some um, tissue paper from dressmaker patterns, lots of things that you can use to play with your jelly plate and get some different uh, looks and kind of to see what you want to work with. We're also going to use uh, some deli paper. That's also in some of the kits is uh, a few sheets of deli paper so you can play with that and see if you like it before you order, you know, or buy a, go buy a whole box of it. All right. We're going to work with both sizes of these and I have a piece of paper here to roll off my colors. So let's just pick uh, some colors to play with. Let's start with, you know, we'll start with this lighter color of Martha Stewart Pearl Paint. And then we have this one. And I know I'm going to end up making a whole lot more that I'm really going to need. We're just going to play. And I have several cool things here for backgrounds. This I got at the dollar store. So I'm just adding a bit more texture with some burlap trim. And for this one, we're going to use the pattern tissue paper. So any areas that are not covered will have a beige paper color to them instead of the white tissue paper plus the extra lines and markings that you get. Tissue paper picks up a lot of your paint so you don't get much of a ghost print when you use tissue paper. But I did have a little bit of an ex extra um, paint on my roller there so or my brayer so I did one on regular tissue paper. Let's mix some greens in here. This stamp is when you do a, 
uh, stamping up stamp sets, you know you have to sort of punch the little stamps out of the rubber piece and you have that little rubber piece left over. I took one of those and mounted it on a block and made my own stamp. So that's where that stamp design came from. And I'm doing some book paper, or it's actually I think some type of uh, dictionary paper that I'm using here. And that's kind of thin and pliable so it should work well on our project and picks up a lot of pretty paint as well as having that um, book paper look. So we're getting a few more ghost prints or extra prints there off of what's left of the um, paint on my roller. Now I wanted to try a little bit of lavender in here using some bubble wrap and more pattern tissue. And you'll get to see all these prints when I'm done with the jelly printing. I'll, I'll go at, at regular speed so you can really see what they look like. Now I have some more Martha Stewart paint and some regular uh, craft paint. I think that darker green is in a glossy finish. And I have this stencil that's like you buy it, you had when you were in school where you had drew your circles and your triangles and stuff. I bought an old book at a book sale and it was in the book. So I got a stencil along with my book. So now we're going to do some a little bit more traditional way. We're putting our, well, let's, let's first let's do this one with music paper. Um, put our stencil on there and pulled it back up, and then I printed on uh, music paper, also available in some of the kits on my uh, Etsy shop. I made a beautiful print. This chipboard bit is just some leftover chipboard where you punched out the insides, and I kind of kept the outside bit of it, so it gives you a little bit more um, design. Now we're going to move over to doing maybe a little more traditional jelly printing, but with uh, some of the thinner papers. We're going to put our uh, paints down, including a little bit of gold. I use Golden's uh, bronze and golds and silvers for these. I think this is the bronze, actually. We're going to put our stencil down and then press the tissue over the top of it. And the tissue, because it's thin, really goes down into all the nooks and crannies of the stencil. So you get a beautiful print and you get a really pretty ghost print because there was still a lot of uh, paint left on the jelly plate underneath the stencil. And we're going to do the same thing with some book paper and some of the thinner book paper. It works really well also. And I was just about to forget to use my um, deli prints. So we'll use some deli paper and get some nice blue. The deli paper doesn't pick up quite as much paint, so you get more of a ghost print when you use deli paper. Of course, it depends on the paint you use, too. If you use some of the like golden open paints, they really stay wet longer. Okay, let's look at the finished prints and decide which ones we may want to use. This is a really neat one, and this one you can see why the white is important, because once you put this on there, you're going to see some of that white going through it, and it's especially important on these, and it'll be even more so once we get the Mod Podge on. 
And remember, here's our butterfly. It's one of the things to look to match that. This, I don't know. I might use a little bit of that, but then it's a little bit heavier paper, so it's a possibility. This one, I think I got a little bit too much paint on. I think I like that better. This didn't get enough. I like the purple. This also probably didn't get enough. This was one with the deli print, and I really like it. Mm, probably not. Maybe that one. That one's good. This one's really pretty. We know we want to use that. Several here, there are possibilities. Here's another one that's really, really pretty. So we want to use. This I love. I think this is just gorgeous, but I think it's too heavy for this project. So I'm going to kind of set these aside for some other time. And what we want to do here is we're going to get some Mod Podge out here. And a brush. Let's see if I have a. Well, this is an okay brush to use. And we're going to take some of these bits. Let's take some of the heavier ones first, like this one or this one. I have a lot of blue in them. And we're going to take these. Oh, I had that one turned upside down. This is actually the right side on it, so we've got a lot more design there. So, we take something like this. And we're going to take it and we're going to start wrapping the sides with this. So, we're going to need to be working like on some of these different sides here. We'll just have to get our Mod Podge and start going around. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're just going to add some Mod Podge to the front and sides of it. And just kind of start putting this on there. What I quickly figured out is that I didn't need nearly as much paper as I was putting on each piece because it's very narrow across the front and you just want a little bit to go around the sides. And I'm trying to kind of spread the blue out to a little bit in the middle, a little bit on each end, and then I'll do that with the other colors as well. This, I really loved how this came together with all the different colors, but it was, I won't get you, a messy project. I had a lot of Mod Podge on my fingers, and I'd have to clean it off every once in a while. You're going to get some little crinkles as you go around the curvy parts of the letters. Uh, it's just part of the design as far as I'm concerned. And the tissue paper and the deli paper really handle that well. Then we're going to switch colors and get some green, blue-green kind of color. And I am trying to keep the um, tissue paper doing sort of one letter at a time, so I don't put the same paper, the same tissue paper over the, the joint between like the L and the E or something, so that that way the, the letters, or the L and I, so the letters stay very distinct. You could, but I wanted to keep mine, you know, I, I wanted to have sort of have a break point between each letter. Now I'm trying some book paper, and I'm going to have to do this in smaller pieces, um, and maybe not where I have curves, so that it will fold better. These are thinner book papers, though. Some of these dictionary papers are, are kind of thin. 
and they're great for this these sorts of projects because you get those extra black and white texture or words on there in addition to all of your color. And I had a few pieces like this one that sort of had that sunburst kind of look that I wanted them to go in a certain place and for that to really show up. So that sort of makes the curve around with the E and separates the E and the I. I've got most of it covered at this point. Actually, I think all of it is covered at this point. Just trying to kind of clean up some of the corners and all and make sure that uh, everything's laying pretty flat against the words and giving it all a coat of Mod Podge. It's going to be important for the next step is that everything had some Mod Podge on the outside layer as well. And I found that a, a craft stick, popsicle stick, was really good for sort of pressing in to all the little corners. I wish I'd discovered that a little sooner in the project. <laughs> I wouldn't have had to use my fingers quite so much. So the Mod Podge is dried, and you can see how it looks at this point. And I've got, again, I've got some of the specific designs in certain places, like the dot and the eye and around some of the curves. I feel like this needs a little bit more color in certain places, so I'm using some Martha Stewart uh, blue pearl paint. I'll have to put the color on the screen. I don't remember the exact color. Um, and I'm going around kind of the outside edge of everything. So it's almost like giving it a shadow to give it a little bit darker color. And this is why the Mod Podge was helpful is so that the paint's so I have Mod Podge all over it, because I know I have it in some places, but this way I have it all over it so that the paint spreads evenly. If you're doing a project like this and some areas got Mod Podge and some areas didn't, when you start to spread the paint, you'll get paint that won't move or, or spread as smoothly in areas that didn't have the Mod Podge. So I'm just going to go around all the little edges, outside and inside, and it took a fair amount of this paint to do that. The blue is dry, and I checked it with the butterfly, and the butterfly has some gold in it. So I thought I would stencil on a little bit of gold. This is actually bronze, but to me it looks gold. The, the gold that comes from golden um, is very bright, and so I really prefer the bronze color. So we're going to use the bronze to add a few little star kind of designs. It's a Jenny Bolin stencil. I think they sell this at Hobby Lobby, or at least they used to. Just adding a few little touches there of the gold. Okay, so let's take a look at our finished piece. I really like how the blue paint sort of tied everything together. It gave it a nice little glow around the edges. We've got lots of different designs to where you can see, like here's some of that um, pattern tissue paper going up through there. We've got a little bit of noose or book paper uh, print, lots of designs, and then you know some of the natural um, folding and wrinkles that you get when you apply tissue paper and these center papers around these curves. And the butterfly ended up having to glue that on because I broke the, I, I moved it around so many times I broke the wire on it, but I just hot glued it to the front. I did not finish off the back because you're not going to see the back where I'm putting it. So anyway, I'm really tickled with the project. I did this on a Sunday 
and off and on during the day so got the whole thing done that way and I really enjoyed doing it was a nice uh, to get a break from some of my other projects and get back to doing a little bit of mixed media thank you so much for joining me if you're interested in some of the mixed media kits check out my Etsy shop and uh, I hope you'll subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to my videos I do a lot of uh, our journal pages as well as usually a scrapbook video every week and some card videos also. Thanks so much.